All right, what is up YouTube? So today I'm gonna to be talking about my Mermo Atlantean deck that I took to YCS Atlanta this past weekend. Before I get into the deck profile, I would like to say that this deck performed very, very well. I think that I'll probably make a few changes like putting Ghost Bell in Haunted Mansions for Call by the Grave because that card is insane against Dragoons and it's just basically an auto lose if you don't have something like Deshudo or you don't have, you know, Teus in your hand or something really good like Sega's Light. And overall, just yeah, this deck did very well. It's good at going first, good at going second. And I think I've lost to me just being unfortunate. Like the Sky Striker matchup, I didn't draw any Phantasme. Phantasme is a strong card against, you know, Sky Strikers. And it's basically, you know, you win if you have like Nethabyss or Seconds Light or something like that. So I didn't draw Phantasme. In any of those games, I didn't draw it against Salaman Greats. I didn't draw it against Sky Strikers. It was just really bad. I only drew it against like True Draco and Layer of Darkness, which just doesn't work against those decks because they don't link summon. And I didn't draw Gamma Seal against like Sky Strikers, like four out of five games that I played. So it was really unfortunate. I feel like I could have played better in all of those matchups I lost. Like Salaman Greats, I probably should have went first. You know, try to set up a Calamity, try to set up a Toad, plus like, you know, Glacia. And I just didn't explore that much with going first because I had a lot of really good going first hands against some of these matchups and I just didn't, it wasn't able to go first. And I did lose like most of my die rolls, so it was not really a choice I could have made. But in further events that I go to, I'm going to try to go first against some of the matchups like Salomon Grades. Probably not Sky Strikers because it's better to go second since you have like Gamma so you have like Phantasm and stuff like that to, you know, combat when going second. So that is some changes I'll make. I'll probably put in Ghost Bell, as I said before, and probably put in a Dupe Frog. I think Dupe Frog is really good instead of the third Megalo because having three Megalo is way too much. I feel like I was top decking Megalo and it was just really bad. So maybe I would make a change to the third Megalo and I would probably take out Ash Blossom Joy Spring for Ghost Bell, even though Ash Blossom is very generic. I just don't have any space to take out. Like I can't take out Fast Tasmanian. Like this card is just OP broken. Can't take out Pinker Tops. This card is just OP broken. Gamma Seal is really good against the Sky Striker matchup. So there's not really any other space I could take out besides like the Ash Blossom. And maybe even Phantasmay, maybe I should side it, maybe. It all depends. Ghost Bell should be in the main deck 100% for Call by the Grave because that card is just OP broken. And one other thing is that I want to play around, you know, Dweller more. Because I feel like, I, even though I only played against one Salomon Great matchup and I did lose the die roll, I want to play around the Abyss Dweller because, you know, Abyss Dweller is obviously like game against this deck when they're playing Salomon Grains because they get so much advantage because you can't really do anything going second when they have a Abyss Dweller activated and yeah it's just really really bad so if anything I would probably put in three Ghost Bell for the Phantasma or the Ash Blossom and probably take out one Megalo for a Dupe Frog because you know you have Toad in the field you can summon it from the deck and you know it's really hard to get rid of Toad so moving on to the deck profile we played three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring Really good card. This card, it, it was pretty bad when I was going against the last match of the, you know, event. I was going against Sky Sharkers. He top deck engaged and he had multi roll as well. So I couldn't ash him and I just lost that game. So Ash Blossom is a really good card. Did really, really well this, you know, event. Obviously, Ash Blossom is really good against every single match of this format. There's not really any matchup where, you know, Ash Blossom is not really bad. In. So the next card is Dragoons. Obviously, I said that you know Ghost Bell should be in the main deck to stop Call by the Grave because if they call by the Grave Goons, it's really really bad. But overall, Goons is just like the second best card in your deck. And yeah, then we play one Heavy Infantry. This is to get rid of you know Flood Gauge, you know Layer of Darkness and stuff like that. I had to play around that and stuff like that. So Heavy Infantry is just a really good card because. You have to have at least four Atlantean cards besides Nephthabyss so you can send. Maybe, like, if you draw two, like, Dragoons, you cannot resolve, you know, Prince because you have to send one and then add one to your hand. So, if I, in case I draw two of the Dragoons, I wanted to have something else to send. So, Heavy Inventory was really, really good. And it did pay off. I did draw this a uh, couple of times. It was a brick. But overall, it played around a lot of Floodgates. Like, I played around Monarchs to Rob. 
I played around. There can only be one. It was just a lot of really good situations where I just, you know, popped the face up card and it was just really good. It got me to, you know, OTK or get through, you know, floodgates or it got through like a multi roll or something like that. So heavy infantry is just really, really good. Then we play one deep CD, but I drew this card so many times going, you know, second. And Deep Sea Diva is just a really bad card going second because, like, it just loses the hand traps. Like, this card loses to so many disruption cards. It loses the Widow Anchor. It loses to Roar. It loses to Effect Baylor. It loses to so many cards. But you kind of have to play this card. It's just, like, one of the strongest cards if you resolve it. But it's just so bad. It's just, like, it just never resolves because your opponent just has everything. And when they're when you're going second, they're going to have something to negate this. Unless you have like Swap Frog to like bait out something or you have Pinkertops to like pop something. Or if you have Gamma Sail to stop their Widow Anchors or something like that. But overall, I really want to take out Deep Sea Diva. But then again, it's just like a sin because this card is like really good for getting out, you know, Prince, obviously. So Deep Sea Diva overall, I drew this card so many times going second. Like, I drew, like, Deep Sea Diva Prince or Deep Sea Diva Seca's Light. Th those are, like, two, like, situations where, like, I, if I went first, I would have most likely won because I would have had Combo. I would have probably Toad, Calamities. I probably would have had, like, Glacier and stuff like that. So, Deep Sea Diva overall, it underperformed. But then again, it's going to be a sin to, you know, not play this. And it's pretty bad because it's a tuner. So, if you do have the Strudo in hand, it's just like you can't just shoot it into Mirror Map because it's a tuner, obviously. So the next card I played was Destrudo. Now, this card was off and on. Like, I drew Destrudo Mirror Mirror against like some players, and I was like, man, like just if you don't know, Destrudo Mirror Mirror is just an automatic brick. Like, Destrudo is a brick as well if you don't have Mirror in your hand, because you can't Yazi or anything. Like, these two cards are just bricks if you draw them both. So and I didn't draw, like, Light Seca to, you know, shuffle them back into the deck. I didn't draw Phantasma at all when they were relevant. So, Destrudo was overall really, really good or really, really bad because I drew, like, Mare Mare or something like that. So, overall, I would play Destrudo again. It's a really good card. If you resolve Yazi, you know, pop something, you just basically win at that point. And especially if you have Prince in your hand or you have, like, Diva or you have Seca's Light or something like that. So, overall, Destrudo performed very, very well. Pinker Tops, this card is obviously one of the best cards in the game. It did very, very well. I was playing around, you know, Floodgates. I was attacking over monsters. I was doing so much damage. And it was all because of Pinker Tops. I think this card is just really, really good. And I would just basically play this in any deck. Any deck. Even the main deck is just super, super strong. Because I just lost a lot of Dyro. So, you know, summon Pinker Tops, attack, pop play around stuff or, you know, Pinker Top, you know, bait out something and then, you know, pop another card. Pinker Top is just OP broken. Phantasma, it underperformed. I didn't draw this against any relevant uh, matchups. I didn't draw it against Sky Strikers. I didn't draw it against, you know, Salamon Grades. I didn't draw it against any matchup that was, like, remotely relevant. I didn't draw it against Pendulum Magicians. I didn't draw them against any matchup that was, like, remotely relevant. So... Phantasme, I would play it again, obviously, probably in the side deck, at like maybe for Ghost Bell, I'd probably trade this in because even even though I drew it, it was only against like the relevant uh, the irrelevant matchup. So you know, then again, you can make your decision. You probably either play Ghost Bell or Phantasme. I'd probably play Ghost Bell because it's very important for the call by the grave. Then we play three, you know, Gamma Sail. This card is really, really strong. It, it overperformed. It's a water. You can tribute over, you know, a Sky Striker link and, you know, just OTK after that. And, you know, Gamma Sail, even though it's not a really good guard going first, it's still a water monster. So if you do open up in your hand, you can, you know, discard it with Megalo or Taos or something like that. You can send it to the grave with Frog or something like that. So it's just like a really good card either way. And it's just really good overall. So. Mare Mare, I think I drew this twice or three times. It was either two or three times I drew this in a game. So it's really bad when you have the Strudo Mare Mare. I think I drew the Strudo Mare Mare once, and it was just really bad. I just had the scoop. I think it was against the uh, it was against the Salomon Great Player game two, and I just drew the Strudo Mare Mare, and I just couldn't do anything. I didn't draw Seconds Light to you know shuffle back or Phantasmate to shuffle back Mare Mare. So it's pretty bad. So 
Again, I would still play Mare Mare. It's still water. It's still really strong when you have Destrudo. You just pop a card with Yazi, summon this card out, get into the pop with Phoenix or something like that, or Unicorn. It's just a really strong card overall, and I would not take it out. So the next card, Gun, is a really good card. It's just another search card that I can search with Teus. And, you know, obviously Mander is here for the Calamities play. Basically, if you have two memory Mouses on the field, specifically Teus and Megalo, you banish this from your graveyard. They both come level 9, and then you can overlay into Calamities really, really strong. Then we play the three copies of Megalo, obviously, and the three copies of Teus. Teus is a mandatory three of. It's not searchable in this deck, uh, unfortunately. And if I make any changes to this, you know, Megalo, it'd probably be like take out one Megalo for a Duke Frog. And yeah, that's pretty good. And then Teus, obviously, I drew Teus Goons so many times going first as well. Like it was just so broken. But, you know, obviously I didn't go first, so I couldn't, you know, set up the Calamities board or, the, you know, Toe, Glacia, stuff like that. It was just really OP for going first. So if I would have won the Dyro, I was probably going to go second anyways, but I want to explore going first even more because of how good I drew going first. Like, so many games, so many games I just drew broken going first. So maybe I'll explore more into that, but we'll get to that in a bit. So... Next card is Glacia. Glacia, overall, it did pretty decent. There was a lot of times where my opponent just didn't have any cards in hand because of, you know, Demise and True Dracos. Or they just set everything with, like, Sky Strikers or something like that. So, Glacia, overall, I think it's a really good card because you can just, like... Like, most people have, like, two cards in their hand. Just Glacia and then OTK or Break Their Board. And then they have like one card, the top deck. It's just a really good card overall. I would definitely not take it out. It's just like a really strong card. Being able to, you know, discard two from your opponent's hand, turn one, and have like a Calamities or a Toad is just way too important in this format. I would still keep Glacia in, even though I'm a going second deck. Because like you could just OTK or you could just break your opponent's board and then discard the last two cards from their hand and they'll be in a top, de top decking situation and you just otk or you know they just like scoop so the next card is prince prince obviously sends goons adds goons or sends heavy infantry add goons or you know send goons add heavy infantry it's just not the best it's just really really good it got negated so many times but a lot of people didn't know that it was a cost i was just like normal humming normal something good there was like effect veil i was like okay send his cost or like there was like widow anchor i was like okay send his cost and it was just so many matchups to where I was just like, yeah, like Nevdabis just like resolved. And the one game, the one game where someone had a Psalm warning or a Psalm strike, and I just lost. It was against the Sky Shaker player. The last run of the event, he drew, I think he drew into the Psalm strike the turn before or the Psalm, um, Psalm warning or the Psalm judgment or whatever it was. And I just lost that game. Like I couldn't do anything. I just lost. So, not the best overall overperformed. I think it was just really, really good every time I drew it. Someone had to affect Baylor or they wasted something to, you know, try to negate, you know, not the best. And you, it's just sins as cost. So it's just like easy clap. And then the last four monsters that I played was the Ronin Toad and the three, frog, uh, three Swap Frog. Just really, really good for making Toad. It's a water, so you can send any of these waters to the graveyard. Obviously, you can get the effect of goons if you send it with the swap. But overall, I think these these cards did overall pretty good. I was making ter toads turn one, or I was making toads after I broke my opponent's board turns um, turn two and stuff like that. So overall, I would probably play like one dupe frog just to summon off of toad, or just to set it, you know, when I brick or something like that. So overall, the frogs did pretty well. Then for the last spell, obviously three seconds light. This card. If I drew it in any of the matchups that I break, oh my goodness, this would have been so good. But obviously, I think this card did really, really well. But sometimes I just didn't draw it when I needed it. So it was pretty unfortunate. But then again, I didn't draw Phantasmic either. So it was pretty bad. So for the side deck, I played three Artifact Lancia. Didn't side it at all. I played against Pendulum Magicians, the, you know, Triff build. Five negates, eight negates, through any hand trap. Yeah. 
I, I didn't, you know, before I was able to decide this card, my opponents already won. Well, my teammates already won. And draw, I did really good against the true Draco matchup. I drawed him when he tried to draw with the Heritage, and he just couldn't activate Demise or anything, and he just scooped up once it showed him that I had OTK. Then uh, Effect Veiler, it didn't really do anything. Uh, I think it did. It, it didn't really do anything, uh, to be honest. It didn't really matter, but I didn't draw it. I think I drew it once, and it just didn't really matter at that point. Uh, three even the match, three rabbit boot. I didn't play against any backward decks besides True Dracos, and I feel like True Dracos, you don't really need it. This is mainly for the Alter Guys and the Guru Control decks, but overall, like, I'm not gonna not side these cards. Like, these cards are just too OP against these backward decks, and you just need something for these backward decks. So, overall, I would not cut these cards at all. If anything, I would probably play a Ghost Bell in the side or something like that, or like, you know, put the Ash in here instead of, you know, maybe Effect Veiler. I feel like Droll is just like mandatory. You have to play that for some matchups. Effect Veiler, it, it kind of is like really good against Salomon Grades. You can have Effect Veiler, the Stalio, they can't make a rank four for the Abyss Dweller. And Artifact Lancia, I'm kind of iffy on this card. Maybe I'd probably side it because, you know, depending on Orcus being, you know, broken or not. Obviously, when Dan comes out, I'm going to be citing this if they are tier 1 or tier 0 or whatever they are when we do get that deck, you know, in full power. So, I think overall, the side deck was pretty decent. I just didn't go against any good matchups that I would side these in for. So, it, it's all right. And then for the, you know, extra deck, Yazi did pretty good when I didn't draw Mare Mare. Pretty good. Gaios was really good as a, you know play to you know bait out you know hand traps and stuff like that so it was really really good or just bait out back row in general i could just you know detach okay you destroy this okay i didn't really care about this card anyway or i can just go into this like you know main phase two with if i have like a meglo and like a tails on field and i didn't have a mander so it was pretty good overall i think gaios did uh pretty decent totally awesome it did really really well i think i made this like a couple of times against the true jerko matchup i made it against i believe i didn't make this i think i made this against the pendulum matchup i don't remember but like totally awesome it's a really good card you you get a negate you get to add something back to your hand from the graveyard it's just a really overall decent card calamities i think i i never made this i don't think i ever made this and then when i did make it it didn't really matter because he just didn't have anything so i'd overall play calamity still because this card is just OP when going first, or just like when you break an opponent's board and you just have nothing else, you can't OTA, you just go into Calamities, and pretty much they can't really play, and you just OTA them next turn. Really, really good card. Boar Low Dragon, I didn't really make this, but I I should have made this against the Pendulum matchup. I should have just, you know, made this, lower the attack of a monster, and he had 4,000 life points left. I could have just like something, something, and then attack over and just game him. Uh, but then again, there was a lot of changes that I should make to this extra deck. Uh, Phoenix, really good. Unicorn, really good. Link Spider, Link Rebo did really well. Miss Starboy, obviously did really well. The Reproductus into the Summon Sword combo, I didn't do it at, at all. Uh, Summon Skull, I, Skull, well, sorry, just Skull Dread. Probably should have made it, but overall, I didn't make it at all. Then Trisbania, I made this against the Pendulum matchup. And yeah, this is the only time I made it. I think this card is just really, really broken when you can't OTK your opponent and you have like Red Reboot. Obviously, it's for that combo where you just like summon a monster, blow up their opponent's board, or you know, banish all of their spawn trap cards. And you know, they don't, just don't have anything. If they're playing like a back row deck, they only have like one or two cards because they're usually setting five and just passing. So, Trisbania is really, really good for something like Red Reboot. And, you know, if they're playing, like, Pendulums, you could banish the scales and stuff like that. Banishing the scales is really, really important against the Pendulum matchup. So, just Bania overall did really, really well. I only summoned it once against the Pendulum matchup. But it was really good in that situation because I did, like, 2k damage because they had, like, a Fog Blade. They had, they, I think they had, like, two Fog Blades and they had two scales. So, I did, like, 2k damage and, you know, it was enough to OTK. So, just Bania is a really, really decent card. If I would make any changes to this extra deck, obviously I'd play Boar Sword if I had it. And I'll probably play like Triple Burst Dragon and Underclock Taker. I think those cards are really, really good at OT King or stopping like, you know, Rain Graveyard and stuff like that. Any, you know, Battle Phase effects, Triple Burst can just stop that from happening. So overall, 
I think this deck did really, really well. I'll take this to future events and, you know, try to do really, really well with this deck because I think this deck is very, very underrated and it's really good at going first and going second. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It's been way too long. I think this, this deck profile is like 20 minutes long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I know I haven't been uploading recently and that's because of just like a lot of events happened. I got sick and, you know, Overall, I had to take care of business and stuff like that. So, hopefully, you're not like, oh, this guy's dead. I'm alive. I'm doing well. So, don't worry.